And there we were recording. Last time I did this, I had a hard time recording. Welcome, everybody, to our Friday Art Lunch Bunch. I'm Frank Korb. And this week we have Sarah Way, who is a current student at Edgewood College. So it's 2020 now. So if you're reading this, listening to this in 10 years, she is the newest fashion <laughs> mogul in New York City okay. worldwide. Um, so anyway, so Sarah Way is joining us. Uh, a former Fort Atkinson High School graduate and um, student entrepreneur. Um, so is that, that a good description of you, Sarah? Yeah, pretty much. You hit it right on the nail there. Right so. on the nose. Excellent. Here we go. So we've got a wonderful presentation and Sarah's worked really hard. So I'm going to, uh, we'll just move ahead with this. Now I am recording this, so give me a moment to figure out my it's always new. It's always new. All right. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay, here we go. I don't know. Sarah is a senior at Edgewood College in Madison, Wisconsin, and studying web design and development, and is also studying graphic design and art studio. Sarah, I would assume that fashion is your studio? Um, no, actually, fashion is kind of outside of my school, but my professors have been really nice and have been allowing me to kind of incorporate that in my research. So um, art studio is pretty much your traditional painting and drawing and ceramics okay. and stuff like that. So. Oh, great. So really wide. She graduated, <laughs> like I said, from Fort Atkinson High School. I'll have to fix that typo later. And was very <laughs> active as a high school artist in the department. Um, I really was intrigued by our conversation earlier about your, your thoughts as to the fashion industry. And the statement is the current economic structure of the fashion industry is not sustainable for the environment or for us. After researching fast fashion, I have realized the destruction it has on our world. The current cost of fashion does not reflect the social, economic, and environmental impacts. Through my creative process, I challenge the way we think about our clothes and force people to create deeper relationships with our clothing. I want people to think about where their clothing comes from, who made it, and the process it goes through. That is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, the floor is yours. Awesome. Thanks, Frank, uh, and thanks for having me. So I'm here, I'm just going to kind of talk about my progression through my, you know, very recent um, business that I've kind of created. So I'll start, um, it, it kind of all started in 2017 with Mrs. Davo, uh, my uh, high school art teacher, and it was kind of, kind of snowballed into a whole entire business that I've created, but it originated from me creating um, a, a AP art portfolio, 3D art portfolio, um, and high school. And when I was doing that, I was really trying to, um, you know, this is kind of me first beginning to, you know, learn how to sew, learning this different unconventional materials that I'm using um, and trying to really take the materials and create it to, you know, something, you know, structural and wearable. And that was really my challenge in high school was trying to do all of that. Um, so in here, you can kind of see a couple of my pieces that I have created. So in the left hand side is um, a bottle cap skirt that I made from recycled bottle caps, uh, which I fired them and then hammered them and then also punctured them to kind of get that old rusty um, feeling from them. And then also I incorporated other things like um, metal springs, metal chains, old um, hair curlers, um, anything metal I could find, I put into kind of that um, the skirt and the skirt is made from um, a screen material and so that was kind of one of my first you know sewing projects of creating a skirt and then attaching things on so um, it's really all these different materials require different techniques so I'm kind of just building on that with the new materials that I have um, and then the piece on the right I actually um, my local community started finding out that I was making all these projects and they're like oh we have this really weird material that we just throw away and we don't have any use for um, so our, my local bike store actually donated me some bike tires. And I was like, well, what do I do with them? <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to make something wearable from them. And so that was kind of me, you know, getting the material and the material really speaking to me. And I started cutting into it, um, taking out the rims and trying, you know, different things. And I ended up kind of um, falling onto this, this feather, twisted feather pattern. 
Um, and so that's kind of, that creates like an armor of, you know, of, of, of the garment. And then the fabric that I used as the structure is actually made from recycled fabric samples from my grandma. So throughout my whole entire process, I'm trying to recycle, upcycle as much as possible um, to kind of, you know, offset the environmental impact here. Um, and that's kind of me also, you know, beginning to, um, <laughs> uh, sorry, um, it's me just trying to start creating um, garments. So we'll put it that Somebody way. Somebody popped um, a question up real quick, Sarah. Yeah. Was the skirt, could you sit down in the skirt? Um, no, it wasn't. It probably would have been really uncomfortable. Um, it is bendable and flexible. So when you actually walk down the runway, you can hear it, you know, all the metal kind of clanging with each other. Um, so yeah, as it, for it to be suitable, no, not really. But later on, I try and add, you know, the functionality of the garments um, and the different textiles I use. So Great. yeah. So in here is another play on kind of, you know, environmental impacts and what I used in my, you know, in the beginning. Um, so I tried to find anything that I could and I was using things like, um, you can see candy wrappers in there. There's a, a plastic bag, um, you know, there's some orange mesh in there. There's jeans, there's fibers, there's recycled, um, you know, yarn, anything that I could find, which kind of really makes people think, well, I'm literally wearing a candy wrapper. I am wearing, you know, garbage or something that people wouldn't necessarily think about putting in their clothing or what, you know, their clothing creates, their whole entire process that, you know, our textiles go through and, and the waste that it creates. So this piece is just really challenging people to think, you know, what is considered wearable or, you know, what am I going to be wearing? So. Um, and all that's there. been sewn together as yeah. one piece then. Yeah, so it, it's really versatile. And this is kind of where, a, you know, a little step in the functionality, but you can wear it like so many different ways. You can wear it on your shoulders. You can wear it as a scarf. You can wear it as a body wrap. Um, so there's just, you know, functionality is with that. And it's just one long strip. It's probably like, oh gosh, like two, <laughs> two and a half yards, you oh, know, long. Fantastic. And it's just a continuous wrap. So, Great. yeah. And this is all high school work. This is all high school work, yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to um, see the rest of it as it goes forward. Yeah, and this is just, you know, the beginning of my process of me just experimenting with the materials. So when I move on, I think I, I look more into doing more research before I start my project, but here I'm just building my techniques. Sure. Um, and so this piece is actually is made from the pieces of pieces of pieces from a previous project that I was working on. So there's really no waste kind of, you know, sustainability that I'm trying to, you know, focus on as well. Um, not only just trying to challenge what you wear, but the process that our garments go through. So the jeans are made from, you know, the little bits and pieces of, you know, typically things I couldn't sew through, which was the seam of the jean, the jean, um, and some other bits and scraps. But then the flowers, the actual flower petals are made from egg cartons. And um, oh, they're made wow. from, you know, Q-tips and glass beads. So it's like, wait, what? You have to, you know, there's so much different forming in, you know, the, um, you know, the painting and um, spray painting and, you know, adding and just kind of, you know, transforming egg cartons into flowers, you wouldn't think of that. And then to wear it is like, what? Mind blown. But yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and this piece just sits on the shoulder. So right now I'm kind of also finding, you know, how the text, you know, different techniques and the different materials kind of flow on the form. Um, so this is just really in uh, an experimental process that I've just been kind of going through and just experimenting with, you know, the materials I get and then creating something wearable. So yeah. Um, Peter's asking, and actually, folks, if you want to, um, please just unmute yourself and go ahead and yeah. ask the question. But Peter asks, is the styrofoam or tinted paper egg cartons? Wow. Um, I think they're like, they're like, the, they're not the styrofoam ones. They're the, they're the paper ones. Okay. The card paper ones. Okay. Yes. And you just yep. tinted them by hand. Yeah. yeah. I, I cut them out and then I just did a little spray paint on them down in my basement, which probably should have been done oh. outside. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, but yeah, it was yeah, just a little spray paint and then I flipped them upside down and I also flipped them, you know, right side down, I think as well. So it was just mm -hmm. kind of playing with the different cutouts, the shapes that yeah. I had. And then, of course, all those Q-tips are clean, so they're not used. Um, <laughs> so much for recycling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, 
there's there's some to some extent I've kind of learned that you know there's to some extent that you can you know continue to reuse things but then in the fashion process that you you kind of do have to you know bring some new items right. into you know into the fold yeah, so sure. this is yeah this is another piece that I also had for um my AP art portfolio but uh another way that I present my work is it's it's difficult for me to you know do galleries because I have to have you know 12 dress forms in my house <laughs> to store all that stuff and then to you know have it on display so a lot of times I'll, I'll kind of look to fashion shows and I really enjoy you know the kind of you know spon spontaneity what is that word spontaneity Spont spontaneity yes yes <laughs> something like that but just kind of you know you know things that happen you know the day of or you know model changes and I, I enjoy that rush of you know working at the show but I also think it gives people uh, a different perspective because they're so close in contact and to see someone wear that down the runway they're like well could I wear that could I wear paper like mm -hmm. you know it looks so real to me like that looks amazing so it's just kind of you know the fashion show kind of it's a big platform that I use to kind of spread my you know my work um, on. So here is the the bodice is made from again paper, and you'll actually see I've participated in the show quite a bit. It's called Ready to Wear throughout the year, um, and the the bodice is made from paper. And I literally I saran wrapped a uh, dress form. And then I mod podge paper to the dress form, mm. um, which then took the shape of, you know, kind of the bust. Um, and then in the back, you can't really see, but if you cut up, you know, to take it off the dress form, I cut it up the back. And that was the opening that, you know, the, of the corset. And then I, you know, you got to lace it all up to, you know, get your model in there. Yeah. Um, and then, <laughs> and then the bottom of the skirt is actually made from repurposed um, linens that my mom, you know, collected from, um, you know, the Boston store, some of her displays, and they were just going to throw them out because they had no use for them. And there was, you know, there was l some little holes in them for display items. Um, but I was like, no, don't throw them out because I can use them. So I, you know, I patched them together and you can barely even tell that they're, you know, were made for displays. And I created a skirt with that. So. Did you make the bouquet as well? Uh, yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was yeah. going to ask about the bouquet. Is that sheet music to go with the bodice or is that linen? Uh, it's, sheet, it's sheet music. Yeah. Okay. It's all vintage sheet music. Yep. And then it's a little bit hard to see, but then we kind of um, dip the ends in glue and then we, you know, poured some glitter because you can't have a fashion show without glitter. So. <laughs> I won't yeah. even start talking about glitter because glitter. Oh, I, gosh. I, I think this is 2017. I'm still finding glitter pieces in my house from this project. So. <laughs> I believe it. COVID mode, Sarah, I could see some of the uh, music performers wearing something like this for their concerts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to Beatrice to see if that's ever an option for you. <laughs> yeah. I'll think about it. Yeah. Um, and then here's another piece that was also for, um, I did my senior year in high school for my APR portfolio, but this piece really, this piece really speaks to me. This is kind of my, um, culminating piece that I finished. Um, and it's a solo dress. And so I was an Irish dancer for 10 years. Um, and this is something that I would traditionally wear to a dance competition, um, uh, which is, that's kind of where I got based my design off of, um, all the knot work is from the book of Kells. Um, and then, but the actual paper material actually has another significance for me. Um, so at each of my dance competitions, I receive a, uh, a, co a competitor number that I put on my skirt. So they don't know what school I'm from, um, or, you know, what dance or who I am pretty much. And it's, I'm just known by a number and I've saved all of my, those numbers for the past 10 years. And so the bottom of the skirt is made from, you know, copies of not the actual cards, mm -hmm. but the copies of all of my, you know, competition numbers. Um, and then on the flip side of those numbers lists all of the dance that I participate in in each of the competitions. So sometimes I might be dancing, you know, six or seven dances at a competition. Um, and then that's listed on the back. And I use, you know, that kind of small little texture of, you know, the, that type for the bodice of the, the skirt. So that's where you can, you can kind of see a little bit of, um, you know, type showing through there, but that's what that's, Kind of explaining there but 
now I'm just, you know, with my garments, I'm creating something that's fitted, something that's wearable. I'm thinking about the movement of my piece. As you can see, as Irish dancers, you don't need to move your arms. So that was, you know, very convenient for me to create, you know, paper arms um, that I don't have to move, but I have complete, you know, momentum and movement in my legs because that's where all of, you know, I move when I dance. Here's um, the question. So oh, this, yeah. the practicality of this for Irish dancing, given the Irish aerobic effect that you've got going on, how would the paper stand up to that? Um, it was actually really good. I actually, when I, I danced down the runway in this piece ah. because in solo competitions, I, you don't need to move your arms. Um, so it was more, you know, they have to be by your sides when you dance. So I didn't have to worry about any of that. And the construction allowed, you know, again, complete movement for my legs, which is all what I really needed. Um, Were those again, arms probably... attached? Are the arms then attached to the bodice? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Mm. Yeah. So I actually, I, when I was receiving my, um, my sash, I had to kind of like keep my arms straight and then like hobble in. <laughs> um, but it was completely fine. So the sash was able to move, but I just couldn't. So did um, it get very sweaty though? No, I put it on like right before. Okay. So I didn't, yeah, not a lot of sweat there. So, um, and then here's another one that I created for in 2018 for um, the show. It's uh, the colorful cubistic coat. But um, this is actually kind of one of my um, second or third pieces that I used, uh, you know, a pattern for. And that was kind of another kind of step in my, you know, fashion career is learning how to use patterns rather than just trying to, you know, drape and fit it on the form. Um, so then this is actually made all from tissue paper. Wow. Um, and so again, here I have to think about the movement of the arms and, you know, the structure of the actual piece. So I was able to kind of create sections that had, you know, this different type of, you know, textile design that I created with the different layers of tissue paper. Uh, and then I sewed those together for the patterns. And then um, the binding is actually, it's a fabric binding because that really prevents the, you know, uh, the paper from tearing. Um, but on the inside, I actually used a, uh, a fabric interfacing. So that kind of, you know, creates you know, the tissue paper to be stronger. Um, Wonderful. But yeah, so that was just kind of like another piece that I made. And was that all assembled on the sewing machine or by hand? It was all by the sewing machine. Yeah, I tried to do as much as I could. So, you know, this this piece is probably, you know, like six or, oh gosh, my model was like, oh gosh, like seven, oh, six feet at least. She was really tall. Tall woman. Yeah, she was a very tall woman. And um, so trying to create that and, you know, fitting all this stuff to the sewing machine that's really unconventional was just kind of... Mm -hmm. I'd have forced it in there. That's but, great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is the back of your, that previous dress, or this is a similar piece? Uh, this is a similar piece. So this is um, for the next year in the, uh, the following fashion show. So the other piece was in 2017. This one's in 2018. Um, but this one has a different title. It's uh, called Memory Wear. And so the reason for that is the different materials that I use actually come from my past. So um, in the bottom layer of the skirt, I used my grandma's um, um, sewing patterns mm -hmm. and I interfaced those and that's kind of like the bottom layer of uh, the skirt. It's a little bit hard to tell, but, um, and then I also ended up pulling some of my grandpa's travel maps and I made those into flowers. And so it's kind of, you know, a play on, you know, memories that I have that kind of inspire me, um, you know, to, continue what I'm doing and create garments that from unconventional materials. Oh, yeah. um, and then this piece won the best use of paper because I have um, tissue paper, I have dictionary paper, I have, um, you know, fabric tissue paper kind of stuff, pattern making paper, music paper, um, and travel maps. So I'm just, you know, it's all unconventional. It's all unconventional and it's all reused. It's all upcycled. So I didn't, you know, purchase anything to create this piece. I tried using things I had at my house, um, which is kind of, you know, it was kind of incorporated from, you know, the beginning process in the AP Arts portfolio that I was making, is I just tried to find materials in my house, everyday things that we use, and create, you know, something wearable from them. Um, so I was voted um, best use of paper, and then best story, because it pulls from my memories from my parents. And then also at the show, um, uh, the audience can vote online, during the show for um, People's Choice Awards. So, and they, they voted for mine as the best piece out of the 10 to 15 garments that were there. So that was kind of a Fantastic. big honor. Yeah.
Not that long ago. Okay, so now we've got <laughs> the next year, mm -hmm. and you went. You were able to travel abroad. So this is this is exciting. Why Ireland? Was that an option, or that was the only place you could go? Well, there's there's kind of a whole entire backstory. I don't know if we want to get quite into that, but um, just kind of the process that I went through. I ended up going to Ireland one because of my Irish dancing history. Sure. Um, and they speak English, and. <laughs> Um, which is very helpful when it comes to making uh, clothes. Um, but also, um, I also play the fiddle and, you know, I had like a really rich, uh, deep, his rich history kind of in Ireland. And Wonderful. Um, the school just offered everything that I really needed. So that was really awesome. Um, so um, with my fashion course that I took there, I, there was um, three different workshops that I could take for four week different courses. Um, and here again, I'm still experimenting, um, but throughout these processes, I'm just, I realized that there are people that specifically, um, you know, are, they focus on a specific part of the fashion industry, which I think is really interesting because throughout the, you know, the past two years, um, <laughs> I was pretty much involved in the whole entire process, mm -hmm. but now I'm thinking, well, you know, people can, you know, you know, specifically work in just, you know, printing textiles or just, you know, weaving something. So I thought that was really interesting to go really in depth and to learn about more specific techniques of just a specific portion of the process. So the first week that I had was um, printing and it was screen printing on textiles. Um, and so I was really just trying to experiment with the different textures I could kind of create with the screen. Um, and also um, with the feathers and textures and colors. And I had to make all my own colors as well. So that was me mixing in colors and learning um, that. So just kind of a different aspect yeah. of that. So then I kind of focused in on, in the beginning I was just having fun, but then I focused in on kind of this feather design. Um, and I had probably a screen print of my own that had probably about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different feathers that I could, you know, reprint really easily rather than cutting, you know, paper out and then putting it down. Um, so I kind of went along with this, this feather design and again, playing with textures, playing with color, you know, the way that I pull the screen down or where I put, you know, the, the print um, ink. Um, and so, yeah, it was just kind of me experimenting and really focusing and, um, on the different textures that I could create just with by printing and painting on you know textiles. So yeah. this is your second portion of it was weaving. Yes. Yep. So the second portion of it was weaving. And so one thing that I really enjoyed about this school is that the teachers were really open ended and allowed you to do whatever you really wanted to do. So the, for the weaving, the teacher pretty much said, okay, your goal by the end of four weeks is to have 32 different weavings done. And I was like, wow. oh, okay. And for a four week period, and they had all, you know, like minuscule little, you know, threads that we could use. Um, but yeah, that was kind of like a big, I was just in there and we could come in anytime and just work. But that was awesome. But for me, it was really interesting being so involved in the process and sitting there and creating that textile and creating the patterns. Um, at first, it was just, you know, just trying to learn how to weave. And then, you know, building onto that, I was able to, you know, be more involved in the process. I took photos of what I did and I tried and, you know, creating textures and creating, you know, kind of continuing the, you know, the color scheme and creating that with my weaving process. Um, and so these were the looms that I worked on. They were little table looms, but then we also had the option of, you know, we had one big four heddle loom as well, floor loom to work on. Um, and then the piece on the left, I'm still kind of, you know, while I'm going through all these processes, I'm still trying, you know, still not create waste and still try and, you know, keep my environmental, you know, mindset with all of this. So the piece on the left, you know, there's all these little cutoffs of, you know, yarn that people just throw on the floor and they're like, oh, the janitor will just come and clean them up. And of course me, I'm like, oh no, don't throw that away. That's all uh. good stuff. <laughs> And I'm just weaving that in to the loom, to the, the piece on the left. And I, I didn't even realize, look, think about the color combinations that I was doing. It was just next piece of yarn, put it in, next piece of yarn, put it in. And that kind of just created like a gradient color scheme. Um, and it was just, it was so the, you know, the physicality of it um, 
that was that was really interesting to me just sitting listening and just keep on going through the motions and stuff like that so wonderful had you ever considered using like unconventional materials like you know did you ever strip down candy bar wrappers or garbage bags or any mm -hmm. other things to create textiles out of not yarn yeah so at, well, at the beginning i was really focused on just the you know using the yarn but then i was kind of you know reaching out and going to you know chunky fabrics mm -hmm. um and then i think at one point in time i did even a paper weaving so i didn't do it on the loom um but just kind of overlapping you know different pieces of paper and cutting them and see what that would look like but the challenging thing for me when i was over there is i was thinking about also um you know i have to take us all home mm -hmm. um if, if you know if i can't so um so sometimes working with unconventional can get kind of big um and i feel really bad if i just like threw it away um so i tried to stay a little bit small actually and i think that kind of impacted the materials that i was using as well um and also just the availability of them um i i was actually kind of eating a lot more fruit when i was over there rather than candy wrappers so finding kind of stuff over there was a little bit difficult but um you know and this is only probably about four weeks in you know to my schooling there so I, it was still kind of new and asking around was a little difficult but um later on i tried to kind of branch out but still keep the environmental you know idea of what my work in that so um in the following the final course that i workshop that I took there was the garment construction. And a lot of these students are actually, this is like their first year of doing, um, you know, anything with clothing. So for me, this is actually fairly easy to try and construct something out of a basic textile um, and um, to cr create a design that was, you know, kind of, a, you know, pleasing, but I had to create my own pattern. And that was something that I never did. So I was designing something, making it out of something that they call twall which is a, you know, a cheaper type of fabric that, that you would use before you cut into your, um, you know, printed fabric. Um, and then they would, um, yeah, so pretty much we ended my process at the 12 step because some of these people have never touched a sewing machine in this workshop. So for them, it was difficult. We were just even learning how to, you know, sew zippers, make pockets, and really think about, you know, sewing clothing inside out and then turning it right side in so the seams don't show and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, but then also this was just kind of sh this for me was really interesting on you know the process that the actual you know fashion industry goes through sometimes for this couture or avant-garde stuff that they do is um, you know create the toile which creates more waste and then they also you know create um, then cut it out of the printed fabric as well so you know the process that it goes through is you know there's a lot of waste. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. I'm creating this piece of toile that I probably won't ever use and it's just for the design. But then, you know, you know, why am I creating this when I can just cut it out of the, the printed material? But then some other people are thinking, well, this is actually better because you're, wa you're wasting less of the printed material. But there's still another, you know, that extra step. So that's, I'm still, you know, kind of baffled at the whole entire process of the fashion industry. Um, but then also, um, you know, the, the, the economic structure of it as well is just kind of, is just really not sustainable, which I'll kind of get into later. So, yeah. However, you're getting the practice on that first garment. You're acquiring skills and expertise. So in a way, you're not really wasting it. You, you, your fingers and your brain and your eyes are learning so much in doing it twice. Right. Yeah. For me, yeah, it definitely wasn't a learning experience for me, but I'm thinking about, you know, even, you know, people that have, you know, made garments for, you know, their whole entire lives and for them to, you know, I don't know, take an extra step. It, that was just kind of, that was interesting. So. Yeah. These are, these are similar conversations that I've had with students and, and artists alike about, you know, using, something as simple as using their sketchbook. I mean, one of my biggest things is making sure the kids don't draw on the back of their sketch and they're, you know, kids are talking about sketchbook paper. It's like, well, we're wasting the paper, but it's like, yeah, but you're not wasting the paper because you're not ruining the next dress or the next, next drawing. And so working with uh, that, that, you know, that less expensive material just to learn and to practice. Uh, when you designed these patterns, were you, did you have to do, did you do them on paper as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That was another step in there yeah. as well. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And well, this is well, again, also remember that this, that was kind of like a new process for me because sure. I was used to using, you know, stuff that was thrown away and then creating it into something, you know, wearable. Whereas this, I'm starting with like brand new fabric, right. and textiles. So the, the whole entire, pro- the, you know, the paper and, you know, the, the toile and then the printing, I never had that much waste in my original process. Because right. um, I was even just starting out with garbage, so for me to even use whatever I did, I you know there was there was no waste created in a sense because it would yeah. have already been thrown away. So for me as an artist, that was kind of interesting to see that and see that type of waste created within you know an actual process in in the design. So yeah, um, so right when I came back, I was kind of pushed right into um, being one of the emerging artists at Art Fair on the Square, which is actually a really huge honor because that is, um, there are a lot of well-known artists there. Um, But there I was also looking, you know, creating stuff that was, or I had to create stuff that people could purchase and people could actually wear and be functional. So that's where I kind of switched maybe from the unconventional use of fibers, sorry, not fibers, but um, unconventional, you know, kind of crazy stuff of paper and I looked more at um you know textiles but then I was even focused on you know the the little designs that I was you know putting into it so you know taking off that little piece of um you know jean and then putting the 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 bird on and then putting the jean back on Mm -hmm. you know just kind of those little details minuscule details that kind of you know came from you know my study abroad and learning specific techniques and kind of getting really in depth with that um, and here I use, you know, a recycled um, jumper, and then the skirt is actually made from um, linen tablecloth. So I did not actually, you know, you know, hand stitch all of those, but I'm <laughs> still reusing them. Um, some of them had stains, some of them had holes, but I tried to work around that um, and put the time in to kind of create something like that. So, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, this is another piece that was, I was, was also there. Again, I didn't paint the actual oil canvas. Um, I repurposed it and so my mom is a framer um, and she received someone was redesigning their whole entire house and they were like oh here's these you know two huge you know oil paintings that they were just going to throw away because they had no use for them because they're just redesigning and my mom's like wait no 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 so I ended up you know creating a jacket from the oil painting and I understand that you know some of it we tried putting like a Mod Podge layer as a, as a protective because of the wear, the wearable and the functionality and, you know, the, the, the wear and tear that it would create with the oil painting. But I was thinking about it more and I was thinking, you know, I'm okay if it, you know, it kind of deteriorates and it, you know, there is crinkles in this piece. That is, that is the way of this piece and that's how it's supposed to be because I'm using unconventional materials. But I also think that, wow, that could create such a cool texture. Now, again, I have to wear it for, you know, like three years and for that to happen, but um I'm like sometimes I'm okay with my pieces you know coming apart I understand that it's unconventional I understand I try my best as you know to create it you know structurally you know intact as as best as I can but uh, you know I also I think about you know time and you know how can that affect my pieces as well so I think that that's like a really interesting perspective about this specific piece um with that but yeah that's great yeah, here's another show right after Art Fair on the Square. I um, put together um, another dress made out of bottle caps, um, which is really fun. Um, and let's see, there's about 900 bottle caps in this specific piece. And each bottle cap was um, hammered. And then um, the bottle caps were then punctured, like the holes were drilled in. And then, okay, so there's a little bit of math here that I'm going to do. <laughs> so there's like 900 bottle caps. And then for each bottle cap, there's about two split rings for like the way that it's designed. So that's about 1,800 split rings. And then each split ring is attached to two different bottle caps. So that's about 3,600, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not a math person, but 3,600 connections within the dress um, between the bottle cap and the split ring. Um, but then again, here I am just trying to drape it on the form and just trying to create, you know, something movable. And I use split rings 
um, because of, you know, I, I didn't just use, you know, a clasp. I used split rings because in my previous project, the bottle cap one, I learned that, you know, there's so much movement they could tear apart and then the, the links can unchink. So that's why I kind of made the decision to go with split rings because it was more structurally, you know, um, stable um, instead of you just using the simple, um, I don't a know. Jump ring? Yeah, just a, yeah, just a regular jump ring. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, throughout the process, you can see I'm learning these new techniques and I'm learning these new things and I'm incorporating them to create it more, you know, durable and structural. Um, but chain mail. What was that? Chain mail. Yeah, yeah. Almost. Yeah. So it's not exactly a new technique, but you're certainly applying. <laughs> you're using <laughs> something that is so ancient and yet creating something so contemporary. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, that was that was really fun. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, yeah, and the earrings and the hairband. Yeah, that was kind of a little add-on because then, of course, you know, in fashion industry, you got to think about not just the garment, but also you know the little little uh, earrings and all the other things that they the accoutrements, <laughs> accessories. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. This piece, I I I love the. The next slide is even better, but go ahead. This is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. I really wish you could have like shown the like the video. That would have been so cool. Um, but so yeah, this piece is again for the Ready to Wear Fashion Show and for this year actually. Um, and I think that this to this day it has been one of my most challenging pieces structurally to kind of create movement within paper. Uh, my goal. Um, the uh let's see the theme of the show is actually called the journey in time so i do one piece that was you know kind of fast forward and this piece was kind of you know kind of um a flashback to icarus but um this piece i wanted to make um a pair of human wings <laughs> which was fantastic i was like i'm yeah. gonna do this um but the really the whole entire structure of it was kind of mind blowing to me because I had to think about the movement of the paper and how I was gonna move with the paper, how it was gonna sit on me. Um, those things, the, the actual wings themselves are made from corrugated cardboard and, and vintage paper that obviously you found in my house. Oh. Um, but I mean, you can see I'm using some pretty heavy duty wires there to create the structure. And I, I honestly, I had a harness on too. Um, and there was, pro I think there was about, 12 wings, I, 12 or 18 wings, uh, wow. feathers per wing. And uh, I want to say they were like five pounds each. Oh my goodness. They were heavy to be carrying around those things for the whole entire show. Um, but yeah, so I guess you can flip to the next one. We will, um, we'll but, work together to get that video into this. Um, Cause I, I saw it and it didn't, and unfortunately it didn't work out the first time, but we'll get it in. So if you're coming mm -hmm. back later, we'll get that video yeah. in so we can see it in action. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so yeah, this is, cool. yeah, this is the, like, the whole entire movement of them. So I had complete movement of my arms so I could move them any way that I wanted to. The harness is fabric. That was just the only way that I could create something this huge and structural. Um, and Did then I also- birds? Did you study? A particular bird to get the structure of the wings and the feathers? Um, not really. I was able to find like a pretty close tutorial that they were actually was able to um, f find, um, you know, they copied a, a bird feather for that. But even between hers and mine, there were still a lot of differences. And I still had to retweak and redesign, you know, her, um, you know, form design structure because of materials that I had and I, she only used like fabric and I was using paper. So, you know, even, you know, the heaviness, the, you know, the weight of it was completely different than what she was doing. So um, as for like an actual bird design, bird wing, no, I didn't um, follow anything like that or study some birds. I did look at a couple of pictures, I won't lie. Because I had to get <laughs> I had to get an idea for the secondary feathers as well and how those kind of shape with the, the primary feathers. So it's nice to see that you know the idea of research is is in these pieces and um, and as you go on through school and, and become you know beyond mm -hmm. school, that research and those practices are things that are going to continue to pay off uh, in you know endless dividends for you. 
Oh yeah, for sure. Inspired yeah. by things like specific birds or specific uh, other uh, pieces of nature or whatnot. Mm-hmm. This is an avant-garde. Yeah, so this one was actually kind of cool. And unfortunately, the model rocked it. She was like super <laughs> sexy when she was like walking down the runway and I loved her. Um, but again, this is all made from paper and typically all the pieces that go down this runway are made are dresses because that's the easiest movement with the legs. And I was like, no, 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 no. This is my third year. I'm going to make a pair of pants. Wow. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course, that's I'm just like, if I say it, I'm going to do it pretty much. Um, and I've never made a pair of pants in my life. Um, <laughs> and another goal that I wanted is it had to have pockets. You know, if you got a pair of pants, you need to have pockets. <laughs> I hear the same about a dress. If you're going to have a dress, it has to have pockets too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a girl's life. Like, if, yeah, any pockets, anything possible is like perfect. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was kind of fun. Uh, so then again, this piece, I still use the same technique of the actual bodice portion, but I use a different type of paper and um, the geometric designs are actually electrical tape that okay. I ended up, you know, kind of putting on there. Um, and then, uh, and then I actually, I made the pants like the day of the show. Mm. So we were, um, this is, um, adrenaline. <laughs> yes. I'm kind of, yeah, I'm like a little, <laughs> <You're> an adrenaline <laughs> yeah, just, just a little bit, of course, but that's, that's kind of the fun part of the show. Um, and so we literally at the actual show, we took a sewing machine. And so I finished the majority of the pants with the binding. Um, I just didn't finish the cuff of the, the pants. Uh, there was probably, you know, another extra, gosh, like six or seven inches longer. And then at the show, I had my model stand on a chair and I measured her and kind of fit her specifically to the, to the, the pair of pants, to the harem pants, um, just because it was my first time, again, creating a pair of pants and creating a kind of fitted pair of pants. Um, I just, I couldn't sew that before the show. Cause once you sew and you cut, done. you're done. Yeah. <laughs> There's no going back. Right. What, what kind of paper are you using? Um, so the pants are made from tissue paper. Tissue paper. It tissue feels very paper. much like a, like a Tyvek, like a house wrap yeah. kind of material. It looks really mm-hmm. sturdy. Yeah, I think it was because I also, I put, again, I put the interface on because I learned from that colorful coat yeah. is that that structure really helps, you know, prevent the tissue paper from tearing. But I think I also used a really, really heavy duty um, interfacing that was more typical than your, you know, it was heavier than your typical, you know, fabric stabilizer. Um, So this is probably a little bit more industrial and it was a little more crunchy and gave it more of that structure, which allowed it to kind of poof up. Yeah. It's very sculptural. I mean, it feels like it could have been chiseled from a piece of stone. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, I'm sorry. Pardon me. It looks a little bit like there's a cutout in the back where they, where, where they're, were there cutouts to afford movement and, and bending the knee? Like, are they like chaps that are open in the back or how did you? Yeah. So that was kind of like a design aspect that I wanted. So I wanted um, the way that the pants were sewn up is actually, you typically have it seen there, but I was like, no, this is a fashion show. We got to show some skin. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so no, they're actually, they're open. They're open all the way on the sides, on the side seams of, um, the pants, but I mean, they are, they are closed enough that you don't see your bum. So, <laughs> um, but no, that was just kind of a design aspect and the fact that they're open. And when she was walking, unfortunately you can't see that in the video. You're but, still um, very young. Uh, you're still very young, Sarah. I'm sure as you mature, we're going to probably see a little bit more of that uh, <laughs> in your fashion. Oh, gosh. Seems, seems like what happens out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I'll have to approve it with my mom first. Let's be honest. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So, yeah. Anyway, so fast forward to now, this semester in school, um, one of my teachers said, okay, you know, kind of put a hold on your creation and let's, let's do some research first. And that's where I've kind of, you know, this is really mind boggled me, not only just because, you know, it's like, oh, environmental, you know, you know, impact our clothing creates, but this is, um the research that i did was just kind of like wow like why didn't i know about this sooner and why do i keep on purchasing clothes or why do i continue to make what i do and that's really informed me in my next my next kind of adventure that i'm doing 
Um, so here I've, well, I still a little bit more to talk about. Oh, sure. Um, so here I've kind of, I've realized through my research that our fashion industry, the way that it is structured is no longer sustainable for our current economic situation, environmental situation. Um, and the re reason why is because it only really covers um, the economic costs. So it only covers really, you know, um, how, you know, it's the, the, the cost that is on the retail price is just purely for profit margins, hmm. you know, um, and they don't um, include these other impacts that the fashion industry has. So, for example, environmental it's very hard to put a, you know, um, a number on, you know, the carbon dioxide emissions that your, your clothing is produced. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also very difficult to, you know, um, you know, do fair trade labor as well um, and put a number on that. So I'm saying we need to rewrite the system. Don't look at it as profit margins. And we need to be able to incorporate the social, the environmental, and the economic costs within our fashion industry, which is kind of equivalent to um, what is now being called the true cost price tag. Um, and it shows people what their, you know, what their clothing is made of, who makes it, where the materials come from, is it ethical? Um, and it, it's going through this whole entire process that opens up the company to the consumers. So it really makes the company more transparent. So people understand what the company is doing and how they're producing their clothes. And this connection with our clothing is making us more responsible when we purchase our clothing. So um, in the beginning of my work, I'm just trying to create, to just not create waste. But right. now I'm looking at the whole entire process from, you know, where does my material come from? You know, who processes it? Processes it? Um, you know, what kind of, you know, environmental impact it has when it's being created and also when it's being discarded, the quality, it, it opens up a whole new range of consumers when they purchase their clothing and, you know, they become more responsible when they're making purchases. And they're not just looking at the price tag because, oh, there's a sale on shirts that are, you know, I can get 10 shirts or well, I don't know, I don't go shopping anymore for clothing. Um, but, <laughs> you know, whatever the sale is at Target or at Shopco, people are like, oh, that's a great deal. I'm just going to buy it because I think I like it. I think it's, I think it looks good. And they don't even try it on. They just buy it because of the price tag. And those mm -hmm. impulse buys are really, you know, destroying our whole entire, you know, you know, fashion industry because it's still propelling this forward for the profit margins. So I'm saying we need to take a step back. We need to understand more about our clothing, where it comes from, um, and just create a new relationship with it. Um, for me, it's I've stopped purchasing literally any clothing yeah. unless I've made it or I've repurchased it. That's kind of my New Year's resolution um, for this year. I was like, I have, I, I look at my clothes. I'm like, this is crazy. This is crazy the amount of clothes that we have. And, you know, and I'm still buying into it. Um, you know, when I'm, you know, purchasing something new, but I mean, I'm doing a better job if I purchase something, you know, secondhand and I'm creating more jobs for people, but I've even just taken a step back and said, this is my, this is my line. I'm not buying any more clothes unless I create it. Cause I have enough textiles in my house to probably cover me for like the rest of my life. And if I'm a fashion designer, I need to stick kind of true to my word. Um, but that's kind of, that's been my relationship with my clothing. Um, yeah. Some people might have a different relationship saying, well, I may not have the skills as you, but I'll, you know, create something, you know, I'll go maybe purchase that secondhand shop rather than purchasing a brand new piece of clothing. But even just to start having people think about this and think about their clothing purchases and having the second thought of like, oh, wait, I remember this person saying something about this or, you know, this price tag, like, this is crazy. Why is it like this? And then they're like, you know, why am I buying a shirt for a hundred dollars? But then you realize the backstory of it. You know who made it. You know where the materials come from. Um, and I think that's, that's really where our, um, our fashion industry needs to be changed. Great. It needs to be completely turned around a 360. So okay. with that being said. <laughs> Next slide. Yes. <laughs> Next slide. Okay. Um, I've kind of, kind of gone on a whole new path. I'm still trying to you know, create less waste. But um, through my business and the businesses that I've kind of run, I've created new, um, new connections. And this lady came up to me randomly at a farmer's market, never knew her. And she's like, Oh, I got 10 bags of raw wool. 
I, I, you know, I have nothing to do with them. Typically the shearer takes them. I don't know what they do with them afterwards, but I am, I would gladly give some to you. So I was like, great, fantastic. Um, but now I have kind of been involved with my whole entire garment at this point in time, from the beginning, from the raw material. I know where it's from. I know, um, and actually just yesterday, I just watched them sheep shear. And okay. I was like, you know, I'm involved in the whole entire process. I understand where my material is coming from and the process that it's going through. But at the same time, I'm still creating something, a new garment. Um, and it's completely 100% like environmental friendly. Um, because it's raw, I don't use any synthetic dyes. I don't use any, you know, synthetic, um, you know, fibers. It's all natural and it's all raw wool. Um, so I'm still learning, you know, I'm still kind of going through this process. But here is all of the raw wool, I believe. Um, and I'm learning the difference between, you know, sheep wool and alpaca wool. Um, and then the two pictures down here is actually some of the processed wool that I've received. Um, <clears throat> and going through this process, I've, I realized that some things I just can't do. It's just not, you know, time yeah. for me to sit and wash all the 10 bags of wool, pick through it all and do that. So I did have to send some of it out to a processing center. Um, but again, they're all local. So I'm not sending stuff, you know, to Bangladesh or to India to get created. So I'm even cutting down my, you know, carbon footprint that way. Um, but I can probably track every single step of where my, you know, clothing has been and where it's being constructed. Um, and I could probably even if I wanted to create my own, you know, carbon footprint path of where, you know, I, you know, my garments are coming from. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of, this is just kind of like a whole new perspective of my clothing going from unconventional to being incorporated in the whole entire process, which I think also, um, with this large system that we have, they have no idea. It's almost nearly impossible to trace all of this, you know, carbon footprint, the waste, mm -hmm. the environmental impact, um, that our clothing has, cause it's, they're just so huge and they're mass producing. So yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah. spin yarn or are you felting? I'm spinning. So yeah, that's kind of like coming up, but yeah, I also had a video of that too, but. <laughs> <laughs> so the, well, hold on, the video idea. So what we'll do is um, Sarah yeah. and I are going to work together and get a couple of videos put in through this slideshow. Uh, and so the slideshow will be available on my website, which I will pull up. It's on artwithcorb.com. So you can see these videos later, but for the rest of the show, we'll, we'll just continue forward. But if you want to yeah. come back, you can see uh, the whole presentation. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, I do. I also, that's kind of like a new technique process I'm learning is spinning. But um, again, these are, um, I've learned a lot about, you know, the different types of wool. So the stuff that you saw before was actually shipped off to a different processing center because it was sheep's wool. Um, and this time, this picture is actually all alpaca. Um, and it, this is like really soft um, fibers that you can work with. And then Argyle fiber mills in Argyle, um, and it's again local, fairly local compared to the rest of the fashion industry. Um, and this is all the natural fibers that um, I've actually gotten from doing, you know, mixing all of the processing the wool, sending them through Argyle. But it's just, it's cool to see just even the natural variants of the different fibers that you can achieve with, um, you know, different animals. So, um, and I, again, you can also, there's a thing that I've, I'm also looking into, haven't quite yet, but you can also natural dye some of these as well. Um, and I think that is part of a process that I'm really interested in, but haven't quite gotten to that because I'm right now in the spinning portion of it, so. So from these materials, let me just kind of skip ahead. I think this is towards oh, the sure. end of your show here. Yeah, oh, I think there's like bit. one more slide. Yeah. What kind of what kind of um, material then are you going to be building? Will these be sewn into, or I don't know the right words, but I mean, you're gonna make sweaters and scarves and yeah. yeah um, or can these be then made into like a cotton type fabric that you could sew into a shirt or a pair of pants? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it could definitely go both ways, but I'm really looking at it to be, you know, the natural, and then also when you add when you then when you use that cotton, you have to be careful of where that cotton comes from. Yeah. Um, because in the process that it goes through, and even just that simple cotton, there's so much that you know. Where did they get it from? Where is it processed? And what does it go through? Even that's not being currently tracked. Sure. So, in a sense, I'm trying to stay as much you know as local as I can, and as you know as natural as I can. 
Um, but I mean, that is an option. So, I mean, this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg that I've been working on and just spinning as one technique. But then I can also incorporate um, one of my professors has a floor loom. Oh, I wow. can, you know, you know, weave stuff and then, you know, cut that up and then sew it. So it's now bringing all of these different, you know, techniques that I've learned together and I can create so many different things because I, you know, I, I use really weird stuff. I use bottle caps and whatnot, <laughs> but um, now going back to even the natural fiber, I mean, it, it makes it more wearable, but I'm, I'm able to understand the structure and the body and, you know, and the form of the garments that I create. So I can, um, I'm also a knitter. I do crocheting. I can do weaving. Um, and then, but now I'm just trying to build up my inventory yeah. <laughs> as of, as of yarn. So, and, you know, also doing that dyeing process as well. So it's, it's, it's a new adventure for me. Um, and I think my whole entire process, even within these three years has been so crazy. Um, you know, working from the unconventionals and then taking a moment, even this year to stop and look at my work and then, you know, figure out, you know, the whole entire fashion industry and, you know, realizing that it just, it can't go on the way that it has right now, which I think is why I'm kind of putting a twist on it and creating clothing, you know, itself that is making people think twice about, you know, what they're purchasing, why they're purchasing and the price tag that's on it. So. That's fantastic, yeah. Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's Sarah's information. Oh, wonderful. Um, so you can visit her on, i um, guessing Instagram. I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Twitter perhaps. Yeah. So there's the Facebook link. And then I also have a group that's like attached to my Facebook page. Cause Excellent. I kind of have a couple businesses, but SJW handmade is more towards my fashion, um, kind of stuff that I do. I also do crafts and I sell dog yeah. treats, but that's a whole nother story. So fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So like we've been saying, uh, we got a couple of videos we'll throw in there because um, really neat stuff. And so Mike, next week we're going to have Pamela Anderson here, I hope. And uh, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. This was yeah. really great. And those of you who've joined us, wonderful. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, please share the website, artwithcorb.com. And it is Friday lunch. Fr art, fr I forget what I can call this thing. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Thanks for coming. I think Bye -bye. they were well done, really well done. It was thank you. It was an honor to watch it. Oh, thank and you. And I'm going, why are you doing web design? <laughs> <laughs>